Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's very own. Radical. Latino is taking you to another level. What up, my people? Welcome back to another episode of the Radical Latino Show. This is episode number, I think, 26, right? So, I'm not going to really talk too much. Um, I'm not really going to do a crazy episode today. Today's like a wrap-up, you know what I'm saying? It's the holidays. It's a very slow news week. Um, I am going to be putting out some videos, you know, between this holiday, you know, uh, vacation days you know what I'm saying I am gonna be putting stuff out like um so go to my YouTube channel you know radical the radical Latino you know on my YouTube the radical Latino and subscribe uh, my YouTube channel I put things that I don't me- mention d- uh, in deep detail on the podcast that's very different so if you guys want to see another um, other things that I talk about, go to my YouTube channel and subscribe and actually see what I put on my podcast. Um, what I don't put on my podcast, sorry, what I put on my YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? It's very different. It's things I don't even include. You know what I mean? But yeah, go, go, uh, go subscribe because I'm working on the video on the whole border wall with Donald Trump. So by the time this is out, that video will be out. You know what I'm saying? So you guys will see my take on it or whatever the case is. But this is going to be a wrap up. Um, the thing is, I put a poll on Instagram a couple of weeks ago. And I know I'm, I wasn't going to really do a 2018. I was going to, this week was going to be like slow. You know what I'm saying? But that that poll I put up, they uh, they... You know, they said, listen, um, you should put something, one of the interviews that you, you actually, you know, were getting a lot of views from and just pull it up on the podcast because I am very new and I haven't been transitioning from my podcast listeners to my YouTube listeners. You know what I'm saying? So that's like a very different thing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm going to introduce some YouTube, you know, the YouTube things that I do, some interviews that I do that I put up on YouTube. I'm going to put them on the podcast and vice versa. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, if, for those who haven't heard the interview with me and Nina, uh, she's the sister of Treasure, that uh, black girl that went on Dr. Phil and said that she thought she was white. She believed she was white. You know, she was just lying throughout the whole time. She was just lying she, and all that other shit. I actually had an interview with her sister. I reached out to the interview that that um interview on youtube got like 7k views or whatever the case is but um i know a lot of people who viewed it aren't subscribers to my podcast and vice versa subscribers to my podcast aren't you know subscribers to youtube so go to my youtube channel and subscribe you know what i mean but that's what i'm gonna be putting in here and i hope you guys enjoy it hope you guys have a great holiday season um don't you know, don't be making crazy resolutions and all, and all that. Because also, before I forget, I'm actually editing right now an interview that I did with a life coach, Jennifer. So I'm gonna put that out before the the New Year's uh, you know Eve thing. So you know maybe that will give you guys more of a motivation or a clearer idea on how you guys want to pursue your new year's resolutions or whatever the case is you know what i'm saying but without further ado here you go the interview with nina hey welcome guys this is the radical latino welcome back to the radical latino show this is going to be a very special episode because i have an interview with nina treasure's sister who was on dr phil what's going on nina how you doing i'm okay how are you pretty good pretty good um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, my name is Nina Kimberly Richards. I'm 25. I'm the older sister of Treasure Richards. Uh, 
My mom has seven kids. I'm the second oldest. And yeah. All right, cool. Thanks. Um, can you, where, where were you guys, um, where did you guys grow up? East Point, Michigan. East Point, so everybody, uh, you and Treasure? Everybody. Got it. Yeah. Um, I remember watching one of your live uh, IG um, live um, things, and you uh-huh. said you said that there was actually six of you guys. Can you uh, talk a little bit more about that? Technically seven. Oh, but okay. Six kids here on the planet. Mm-hmm. But my mom and dad have seven kids. Uh, it's just that the younger one, he was not alive. He was not born yet during okay. this time. Uh, the most important time, like the crucial time of, you know, the sixth piece of just what we call it, our, call ourselves like the brothers and sisters. Um, yeah. He, you know, so I can really don't count him in this and like what, you know, when I bring up like my brothers and sisters or like the history, cause he was only born in 2012. My dad died in 2006. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Um, and Let's just fo- um let me just focus on the whole treasure situation before we get in deep into the whole history. Um what were your first thoughts when you saw your sister on Dr. Phil? Well, um I already knew that she was going to be on there. I just didn't know the episode was going to be so originally what for until my mom kind of slipped up and told me, which I thought was crazy because Treasure never had no issues with race uh in the past, not that I knew of. And then you know, to see her talk about black people, um, I only watched a snippet. I didn't watch the full thing. Got Somebody it. had tagged me on Facebook saying, this looks like your mom. I was like, that is my mom. That's my sister and my mom. But when I saw it, I was cracking up because my mom was just so, her acting was just so bad. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, you know, she just looked so, like, so, like, melancholy and just, like, nonchalant about yeah. her, just, her daughter having to take on the phone and she'd be like... Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Like, yeah, yeah. it was just so bad. So me and my sister was just, my other sister, was just cracking up on her. And yeah. then I was like, you know, continuing with my normal life, didn't think anything of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, at a, at a certain point, it kind of kind of did look a little staged, you know. But um, It was very staged. Yeah. Even the house that they were in. That was a studio. that They said it was called a garage or something. That wasn't their, our home. Oh, my really? My sister and brother... Yeah, they, they, they're impoverished. Like, they live in poverty. Really? My mom doesn't even live with them. Yes, they live in the hood. Oh, wow. Because... My sister lives in a home with bed bugs. Uh, <laughs> okay. And Kindle. Um, yeah. So, so that whole, that whole, um, that whole little uh, part where they're at home and she's calling the KKK and everything, that's all not their house, it's all staged. No, that all was shot in uh, Los Angeles. Okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So where was the affluent white neighborhood that she actually came from? Treasure really didn't experience living in the suburbs. And it wasn't even a white area. It was just like a, a suburb of Detroit. So it was like kind of more mixed. You okay. know, but then people from Detroit started moving into East Point. Uh, the treasure was only there up until like maybe four or five years old. Other than that, you know, other than that, she was in the hood, but she always knew of her father and it was always kind of going back and forth between the suburbs and the hood anyway. It was nothing new to her. Gotcha. So, because I, I remember you on your on your live and uh-huh. I was repeating it a couple of times. You said that, um, that treasure basically... She uh, she ended. She just lied. Who came? Uh, do you know or can you assume who came up with this whole lie about? Hey, oh, let's... I'm assuming she did. You okay. know, seeing these stars like Little Tay and like you know the Wolf Vickies and the Catch Me Outside girls, yeah. outrageous. Yeah. You know, just the more outrageous, the more you know, hip and trendy you'll be. But she saw this, but if... and she used it to her advantage. So if she, let me just be clear. She is 16, right? She's not 20? Yes. No. Okay. All right. She is 16. Even on Dr. Phil, it says 16 by her name. No, no, yeah. Why do people think she's 20? Yeah. Are, are people stupid? It says 16 by her name. Yeah, that, that's what that's what I thought, you know, because when, when I'm like, re- like, once again, you know, researching and stuff, right? Going through her her Facebook, you know, I'm looking at the year. I'm like, wait, this doesn't add up. You understand? But, but if you look on Dr. Phil, you see it says it by her name. 
16. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what I that's what I thought. I was like, okay, she probably lied to get on Facebook or something. But um yeah. But um what I was gonna say is that uh okay, so that whole um she never lived in the affluent neighborhood and she's the one that came up well why did you why would your mom and your brother was that your brother by the way yes okay yes. why would yes. your mom and your brother actually say okay we're actually gonna go into this lie what what was the whole purpose for money what what, what is what, what what's the whole thing for well my mom is used to live in a certain lifestyle that she does not live anymore she looked at it as a trip to los angeles and being together with the kids and having fun to her, it just sounds fabulous. So, okay. of course, she was down with a lie. She was sending me pictures of what she ate. Um, oh, wow. Just, again, she didn't tell me She didn't tell me uh, why she was on there. She was just telling me she was going on there. She was sending me pictures of what they were feeding her and how she would just order wine, and she's not even drinking like that. She told me it was just it was just a respect thing, you know, that she wanted the wine and, you know, to be treated like she actually was a celebrity. Um, and then when it comes to my brother going along with it, uh, he's definitely has m- not much going for himself. Uh, he works at, you know, a dollar store. So he, it's like they just all looked at it as, like, something to do to really, like, I don't know, really help expose them, maybe getting them into, you know, some sort of fame or wealth. Yeah. Uh, and so they shamed, they shamed, they threw our bus over the, like, they threw, not our bus, I'm sorry, they threw our whole race under the bus, they, like, disgrace our family's name and showing a picture of my dad it was just disgusting yeah well when i first initially when i first initially uh saw this at first i thought it was just like you know a complete like all right this doesn't seem real but then again you might never know you understand Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you know i obviously made a video about it you know on my youtube channel and i you know clearly said i'm not gonna hold back i'm telling you what what i said you could probably, you could see it yourself. Um, I said that, you know, I blame the mother for allowing this, but I also blame the dad because that's who integrated this white supremacist um, ideology. But on your live, you said that's not even the case. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about your dad who passed away? But you know, just my condolences, by the way. But can you tell us a little bit more about that? Treasure really didn't even have a relationship like that, or that respect level even with when she was very young. And she always had her biological father in her life. She was the only oh, so she child knew. out of my mom's kids, out of the six piece, who had the biological father and knew of her biological father, which was a weird situation for us because all we knew was daddy. And even though we didn't really know our dad, it was she played favorites. And she was, you know, all stigmatized by her father, uh, her treasure's real dad. Yeah. Uh, but my dad, my dad, who they put on TV and... Uh, made seem like this white supremacist was a wonderful, beautiful human being who did nothing but love and take care of us much better than our own blood. She was neglectful and abusive. So but this he, man, he did, he went out his way. He was old. He died at his job. The last thing he did before he died, before he went to work, is he made my sister a grilled cheese sandwich. Mm, mm, and then he uh, left work and he died. And... W- I remember you saying on, on one of your lives that um, that your mother, she had multiple kids with multiple men, and yes. your your white dad is the one that took care of you guys. And uh-huh. is that is that true? A hundred percent. A hundred. So now my question okay, is: See, we have different fathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My question is: Why would someone allow that? Do you know? Do you my have dad any was answer? an older gentleman. Uh-huh. My mom was very beautiful. My mom was very beautiful. They had met, you know, in a dark time in their lives. And, you know, she just, you know, married him for, she told me, out of his, his reason, for security purposes. Security uh, but my purposes? dad was a very loving and kind man. Mm. And he loved children. My dad was actually adopted. Oh, okay. So he was kind of used to being family but not being blood. Got it. The color thing wasn't even an issue for him. He just really wanted, you know, that family lifestyle again because his first wife had passed away. His kids were grown up. Got it. And, and did you did you see any infighting between both of them saying that you cheating on me or anything like that? No, never. Mm-hmm. Never. It was kind of an unspoken thing. She had boyfriends and, you know, we called them uncles. Like Treasure's dad, I knew was Uncle Rick. 
Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. We oh, got wow. sprinkled. Okay. And, and it was just very, like, you know. Yeah, you, okay? you also. My uncle, like, all these uncles and shit. You, you also, I don't want to put, you know, words in your mouth or, you know, say anything, you know, out of turn, but you also called your mom a hoe? Um, yep, yeah, she's. That's what she is. That's what she promoted <laughs> I, I don't in our household. I, this is, you know, I don't want to put your words in your mouth, but if that's what you said, can you talk a little bit more about that? That's something she promoted very, like, openly. You know? Okay. Just, like, being a whore and being an escort. One day she was doing my hair, and she said, just, you know, just out of the blue, she said, I'm an escort. That's what I do. Mm. Like, but I remember I was, like, in the fourth or fifth grade, and I did know what it was. I don't think she knew that I knew what it was, but I knew what it was. Got it. And did that Something affect... she promoted, it, she tried to groom did that aff- me specifically. Yeah. Did that affect you in any way? Did you turn into that lifestyle or... She tried to groom me at a very young age. Uh, me, I've always been very open and all about, you know, my sexuality and all that. Just kind of me naturally. Uh... It did have an effect on me, you know, because I became a dancer and, you know, I did other little things that, you know, most people wouldn't be proud of. But this is just a part of something that I've been through. Okay. Uh, and I don't shame myself for things that I did to myself. Okay. <clears throat> or for money. Got it. I mean, I was just a teenage girl having to walk the streets at night because my mom threw me out of the house. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Um, and and once again, your your relationship with your mother which is Treasure's mother, isn't that great with none of her kids? None. None. The only one she's trying to uh, do decent by is my youngest brother, and that's because she's married to his father. Got it. Got it, got it. And so she is married to to someone currently? Yes. Gotcha. And are you aware of anything that she's probably repeating again with her last, uh, which are, you know, the one that... Oh, yeah, the neglect. That boy has anger issues. Um, he does go to school and stuff like that, but he's seen a lot. He's jumped, bumped. He never had a stable household. Right now they're in low-income housing. Yeah. Never really had a stable household. Um, he's seen my mom and her husband, which is his father, physically fight each other. The father, he sold, he sells drugs. There's been drugs around him. He picked up a blunt one time, blunt police, you know, just uh, cocaine, just open around this boy. Uh, seeing them fight, I think he's seen them have sex openly because my mom talked about how she'll, you know, she probably he probably caught her them having sex before. It's like he's seen a lot for a little boy. Oh wow! Okay. Mhm. Oh wow! And so, let me just ask: What made you want to just come out in the open and say, I've "Listen, this is been bullshit." Very active on social media. Uh-huh. I've always been very active. I always keep up with the latest stories, and you know, I've always liked the, like the entertainment industry. I've always been into that kind of thing. Okay, and I've always been more into it than you know my younger sisters and brother, Kendall and Treasure. Treasure and Kendall kind of were more into watching these YouTube conspiracy videos and you know, stupid silly videos. Where I was always like deep into like all aspects of social media because I didn't get. Uh, enjoy it like they did when I was younger so now that I'm adult you know and you know I'm still kind of young so it's like really sparks my interest I'm always posting you know about my life some yeah. little stuff like that you know makeup stuff because I like I'm a very girly girl like yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it's just like who I am and so to see my family being plastered everywhere and uh I've always been open um at first I was just gonna give my break to a youth she didn't hit me up and when I want it I said okay I'm gonna use my little platform and come out with the truth. This mm. is my dad they're speaking bad about. This is my race they're speaking bad about. This is, you know, the black community that's being put on an uproar all at the hands of my little sister. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, so, when, um, when did, uh, when, when you found out that your, that your mom and your brother and your sister came out and, you know, people were coming at you, did, did they come at with, at you with hate because I would assume people would say, okay, this is your family. You probably think the same. Did you get a lot of Most hate? Most people call me crazy because in my life, I'm very dramatic. You know, they say I'm an actress. I always had a big personality. I got a big spirit about me. And it's just, I'm always like a showman. I love my industry. And so it's just like I pick things up from things I watch. 
you know, because I'm a very observant person, you know, um, and I'm also very dramatic. I've been through a lot. So people don't, they didn't understand my personality. They called me crazy. They said, uh, well, I mean, it's obvious that I am her sister. And one reason people say because me and my mom look a lot alike, which we kind of do, is that I'm a more brown skinned version of her. Mm-hmm. Um, but people, I, I actually got more support for that fact that that's my sister. I have picture, I have baby pictures of her. I have pictures with her. Yeah, I've seen, um, them, I I've seen them on your IG, yeah. Yeah, I have her picture of her in my brother's obituary. Um, uh, yeah, it's like you can see us together. That picture they used on Dr. Phil and they do a close-up of my sister and my brother, uh, that was the same picture that I posted with me holding her. Mm. So it's just, I have too much proof. We all have the same last name, Monique Richards, Treasure Richards, Kendall Richards, Nina Richards, and honestly, Treasure needs to get her Richards last name removed and just be her father's real last name is Dawson. It should be Treasure Dawson because she disgraced our father's name. Mm. Okay, and can you talk a little bit more about the this whole CPS uh, um, incident and issue? Well, the issue with CPS is that they've been looking for her for years, and you know, my brother, I'll just give him the responsibility since he wants to help take her on the show. Has been harboring a fugitive in his home. This girl's a ward of the state, does not go to school, and is underage. She hustles for a living. She goes on the street, begs for money. She goes to people's doors, door, uh, pretending she's a part of a church, selling CDs, you know, selling gospel CDs, and, you know, getting food. At first, we look at it as, well, you know, she has to do what she has to do. She doesn't want my help. She doesn't really want the help of an adult. But then, when she starts scanning people, selling, you know, dollar store quality hair for these high prices and, you know, calling them bundles, going to their doorstep, selling them to, you know, young, stupid girls, you know, just doing stuff like that. Really? Yes. Wow. Because, um, yeah, I've seen... CPS I... has been... CPS has been called. I called them twice now. Okay. But uh, it, it, I let them really stress that this is serious and she needs to get offline. Gotcha. Gotcha. And what did CPS say? Can you, can you disclose that or no? All they said was... All they did was take my report. They said they'll send me a letter. I will keep everyone updated with, you know, the letters. And I'm just yeah. really going forward with trying to save my sister because she's fucking up her whole future behind this. Do you think she'll ever be able to get a normal job now? Yeah, no, that's right. No, you're right. What 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 do you think the end game for Treasure is that she might come up with? What What's the end game? What's the end goal? The only game she wanted was to become a meme and viral. That was it. She didn't see you know, down the line. Gotcha. I, I, saw, I heard, I've seen, I don't know if this is true, you could probably attest to this, that um, Treasure uh, has a donation page. Is that true? Yes, it is. Oh, so that is true. She has a donation page. Um, yes. do, are you aware of anyone donating to that? I, ha- I The last time I saw nobody donated to it, but they are. I mean, that's their money gone to drain. Yeah. They want to give the money to this uh, kid who's the war of the state and help her, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on them. Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna tell people to do what they, you know, what to do with their motherfucking money. They yeah. have stupid to do with it. I don't know how they have money in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I don't gotcha. know how they can set their shit up to send it to somebody if they're that dumb. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And what are your what are your thoughts on um her YouTube channel and some of the comments down below on her videos? I think she's just digging her hole deeper with the YouTube thing. Mm. She's just making it worse on her life, and she doesn't even know it. She's going to continue with the YouTube videos and people in the comments below. They can say whatever they want. You know, the internet loves this kind of shit. Yeah. So, of course, you're going to have people, well, yes, white queen, go. Some people just fall for it. Some people just support anything nowadays. You can take a shit on YouTube and they'll be like, take that shit, girl. Yeah, yeah, Spit yeah. It out. yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I, I've seen some of your things that you've been going in on Dr. Phil. Um, oh, yeah. I love roasting him well, because he deserves it. My family's going to suffer. Treasure will never be able to live a normal life. Yeah. So Dr. Phil putting her on that platform needs to be just as guilty mm-hmm. and just as roasted. I believe he's a racist. Mm. The fact that he would sit there and, and correct her for saying retard, but not saying nigger, and not saying black people are this, and not this. He's a fucking yeah, no, you're right. When he looked at my sister in the face and said, you're not a part of my white kind, tell me that's not some racist ass shit. Yeah, my no. father, who was a white man, would never say that. Yeah, no, you're right. Never. You're right. See, Dr. Phil's a fucking racist. See, the thing... All the audience members, their whole fucking faces, you can see it, they didn't give a fuck. Yeah. No, you're right. That, that see, big spirit, he was getting a check. See, he was happy. See, the thing... He was complacent. That's, she was complacent. She sat her ass the fuck down, and you had this little girl dogging out black people, he's just sitting there. My mom is just as disgusting. You want to know, if you watch that Dr. Phil episode, look at my mom. Look at my mom's mouth and look at her teeth. One thing she was very, very proud of was how they took her to get her teeth bleached. She's always been obsessed with having her teeth bleached. Look how white her teeth are. Really? She was just wow. complacent. She was just complacent. The- Didn't give a fuck what Treasure was saying because she got her teeth bleached, got to eat good. Dr. Phil is a fucking disgrace. He exploited my family, my impoverished family. 
one thing that I did notice, yeah, that that's absolutely true because one thing that I was very critical of was the fact that Dr. Phil was totally fine with um, people just coming in there, especially, you know, your sister who was uh, faking, uh-huh. but whatever, coming in there and just disgracing black people and calling them all types of names left and right and all around the world, you know? But uh-huh. I, bet you, I bet you $100, you know, he wouldn't do that with someone white coming in there talking bad about white people. You know what I mean? Oh, never. Oh, never. He probably wouldn't even take that story on. Exactly. Oh, not even probably. He wouldn't because he's racist and he's a people proud white man. Yeah. No, no, you're, you're, yeah. you're right. Um, A lot of people were saying that some of the things that Treasure was saying was uh, Dr. Phil's staff telling her to say that. Do you know anything, any validity, if that's true? I don't know if they told her. I believe this is all stuff she came up with, but I believe they coached her. Okay. Like, it was, they had to do things over and over again. She said that they had to, my mom told me this, that they had to do things over and over again. Um, I don't know if, she never told me about a script, but, you know, it sounds like me. That maybe that there was some sort of script in place. They had to do things over and over again, say the same things over and over again. Gotcha. It, it does sound like it. So probably there was a script. Even with my ch- my sister Treasure as a high school dropout, why is she talking so calm and so, you know, clear? Got it. No, like, I right. don't even talk calm and clear. See, we grew up in the same area and actually grew up in the suburbs longer than her. Yeah. See, the thing, the thing about it, when she was telling, when she was on camera saying, I'm a Caucasian, automatically, I was like, wait a minute, what? I'm a Caucasian? You're not saying I'm a Caucasian? I'm a Caucasian? What does... That doesn't make any sense. You understand? That right yep. there doesn't make any sense. And then on top of that, she goes on and says that, you know, white... old. You know, she sees herself more of a white person and everything else, but then goes on and bashes uh, black people. So I'm like, wait a minute. So you're saying white... Is racist? Is that what you're saying? You know what I mean? Some of the some okay. of that some of that stuff didn't really add up. Um and I'm glad that you're actually, you know, you're you're um you're you're proving some of the stuff right and some of the stuff, you know, that's that's been going on out here. Um can you tell me a little bit more about um how you and Treasure grew up and how was your your you guys upbringing besides the stuff that happened with your mom? Well, uh, so you talking about when my dad was alive? Yeah. We were normal children. We used to watch SpongeBob. We used to run around. We used to play these games all the time. We always used to play games with each other, with toys or like tag. Or my mom used to just throw us outside in the summertime. Just throw. We used to just. This was right after my dad died. We used to play hardcore tag. We had a whole bunch of cousins who used to come over, and you know, we all we were just normal kids. We used mm. to play play video games and sing songs and together. You know, we like Disney movies. We would watch uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and That's the Raven. And, yeah. You know, we were just like normal kids. You know, we were, were going to school. We were, we were eating good. Um, we had a very, really normal household. You know, my mom, she was always kind of like, you know, we carry, always kind of like that. Always, even when my dad was alive. It just wasn't severe until after he died. Gotcha. I mean, it was always a problem. It was always a problem. Uh, you know, when you have an abusive parent. But it really wasn't like as extreme, it would be like, because I had a wonderful dad, I would always just be, you know, with him, or, you know, hanging out with him, as opposed to my mom, you know, be out in the streets anyway, yeah, and come home at night time, or, you know, go to the mall, go shopping, we'd be all at home together, she's been leaving us uh, at home by herself, you know, since I was, you know, very young, I guess she figured we were old enough to watch herself, like, maybe I was, like, eight, my mm-hmm. brother, he's uh, was probably like maybe eleven or something like that. And we, you know, she'd leave us to watch her kids, her babies. Mm. That's how I was able to change a, a diaper at a very young age, and mm. you know, make a bottle at a really young age because she would just leave her kids on us, and we were like young too. So gotcha, 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 gotcha. And well, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm glad that you're actually uh, out here exposing the lies and um, putting at least trying to save your family's name. You know, um, it's very unfortunate that this is something that actually had to happen, you know, to you Mm -hmm. and your family and stuff. Um, You know, can you tell the people where they could reach you at? Um, Well, my Instagram is at Nina.Kimberly underscore. Gotcha. So if anybody wants to follow her and keep up to 
keep up to date. And she has a lot of receipts on her Insta on her Instagram. So if anybody wants to know, you know, just hit her up. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming in. All right, guys, that was the interview with Nina. Remember, I'm going to be uploading and I upload a bunch of stuff on my YouTube channel. So go subscribe the radical latino you know what i'm saying so i just wanted to give you guys something special something you know probably you guys haven't heard or whatever the case is so that was nina the sister of treasure the black girl that went on dr phil saying that she was you know white and she believed she was white she was saying a bunch of racist shit about black people her own people you know what i'm saying so go to my youtube subscribe the radical latino also Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter at Radical underscore Latino underscore. Both of them are the same name. Hope you guys have a great holiday weekend. Hope you guys are getting a lot of presents and just taking care of things. You know what I'm saying? Stay happy. Stay safe. And I'm going to catch you guys later. Peace.